I'm Arya Schwartz along with Rachel Galligan, and welcome to the Windsider Show where it's all about the W, the Chicago Sky. What's their roster situation and what is the situations that they're facing? Let's dive in. If you like our show, please consider joining our Patreon community, patreon.com backslash windsider. For less than a cup of coffee a month, you can directly show support for the hard work we do covering the W. And don't forget to see our amazing staff's written content over at windsider.com. We're also on Instagram at the windsider. Remember, downloading the episode makes our stats look better and allows us to continue doing this important work. If you want to sponsor an episode or more about Windsider, the Windsider show, email us info at windsider.com. Rachel, let's start with your uh, former hometown team, your yes. half of your hometown team, Chicago <laughs> Sky. We're going to be doing a, a, a few episodes, shorter episodes than our typical episodes. Um, just diving into the free agency picture for each of these teams. We're not going to go super analytical. We're not going to go super statistical. We're going to get. We're going to look at it thanks to the people over at Her Hoop Stats. We have a fine directory of the salary cap sheets. And situations for each team. So we're just going to take a peek at those and talk about what we're feeling are, you know, the struggles this team is going to have during the offseason, what they might want to do, and what they actually have the ability to do. So let's start it off with who is on the Chicago Skies roster as of today. It's a small roster, not even enough to put together a team. You got Candace Parker, Ezra Stevens, Ruthie Hibbert, and <laughs> why? I feel like I mispronounced her name. Hebert. Whatever. Hebert. <laughs> Hebert. I always, I don't know why. Um, and Dana Evans. <laughs> so you look at this team and you're looking down the salary cap and you see that they have over 9,000 left in the cap space, which is great. But it's not as great as it sounds when you think about who they have to bring back and who is basically expected to always have a roster spot until they retire. And that's Vanderquiz, Courtney Vandersloot and Allie Quigley. Um, and realistically, you're talking about right around 400K for the both of them, right? They're going to get that max. They're going to get, you know, that big money um, or as big of money as they can get with the makeup of this roster. And we'll explain what I mean by that in a moment. So let's just, you know, it's going to be pl- give or take a couple, you know, maybe 10, maybe 20,000. Um, but just bear with me for a moment. <laughs> so you take out 40K from 900K. And I'm no math genius, but that leaves you down to 500K. You mean 400, so, not 40K. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not a math genius. I was testing you, listeners. Um, now, now this is where it gets interesting because you have that 500K to spend on Ka, Dolson, Astu. And if you want, we can also include Lexi Brown and Diamond to Shields. So this is really like if you want to fully run it back, you throw the money towards everyone as much as you can. You say, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Realistically, there's a few things you got to think about. Clea Copper is going to get close to that 200, right? Like she's going to be a big spender if you want to keep her because she showed herself this past season and the season before the the evolution of her game and what her price tag is. So realistically, like there's a very good argument to be made. Um, I, honestly, I don't even know if it is an argument to be made that like she's more important to this team than somebody like Allie Quigley. Um, and so obviously, you know, there's cornerstones of this team, but you're going to realistically have to throw a big amount of money in that. So let's say that's 200, right? So now we're down to 300K, give or take. And I will say this, Rachel, you know, I'm a Dolson hater, but she showed the doubters wrong this past season. She proved why James Wade kept her on the roster through the trials and tribulations. Um, look, I, and, and I'll say this, I was proven wrong. I still... The stubbornness in me will say, I think those two plays that she made in the end of the finals oh, man, kind man. of amazing, amazing. But I think it's a recency bias. We're like, OK, <laughs> those two great plays versus like the 50 others that I would say were negative plays throughout the playoffs. Do they balance out? I mean, do they? I don't know. Whatever. Whole nother thing. They're calling me. I forgot what the nickname I, I got, which was like hater. Yay. Or hater something yay? like that. Hater. Yay. I'll take it. Whatever. <laughs> um. 
So while I think she's earned a spot on this roster, this is where it really gets interesting because in my opinion, I don't care that she had those great plays and deserves a spot. We're in a situation where, you know, you can't be throwing a huge paycheck at her, right? Like you just can't. And if, and if you do right now, and you're in a situation where a Stu is a good player also that this team clearly is a big fan of, but you're down to 300 K for the two of them. And that doesn't even include Lexi or diamond, right? Who are both reserve free agents. And that's where it gets tricky because another team, Rachel, if you put on your Indiana fever cap or Atlanta dream cap, you come on over and say, Hey, I'm going to give an offer to Lexi or diamond. That's a huge price tag that I know Chicago won't be able to match. And that's where it gets really sticky. The thing that I want to bring up before I toss it over to you is this question can be boiled down to, in my mind, depth, because you look at who is on this roster and who could possibly be on this roster based on last year, the championship run. And you look at the depth in the bigs and you look at the depths in the wings and there's a lot more depth in the bigs. So in my opinion, if I'm James Wade and I'm realistic about the fact that you can't keep this roster together because it's going to be hard to, you know, to pay the remaining 300 K for Dolson and a stew. So now I start to think, okay, well, if I can't do that, I'm going to try and keep either Lexi or diamond. And more realistically, I want to keep diamond because whether or not she was making shots. And I think this past season, some could argue that diamond was an overrated player this past season. I know there were some injuries. I know there are some other issues. Fine. But my point is more so to have the athleticism of Ka and Diamond together, whether or not Diamond was making all of her shots, still exhausted the opponent, still gave that advantage. And if you don't have that depth, where else are you going to find someone as athletic and speedy as Diamond to fill that type of position? So now you're just in a really tough spot of what do you do? And I just ranted, so I apologize. No, it's re- that was really great analysis. I mean, this is the big question, right? I mean, I, 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 I think that Chicago and and James Wade have to be approaching this as we want to run it back. Um, obviously, how can we secure everyone? But understanding the price tags, the biggest one has gone up for Kalia Copper. You have got to secure Kalia Copper. She's going to be extremely sought after. I can't imagine a team in the league that is not trying to. Um, you know, make a play uh, for Copper to, to, to sign. And so that's got to be first and foremost, in my opinion, and the chips have to fall where they may after that. I think in order to run it back, um, you've got to be able to have people on this team willing to take less. That's the only way. And when I say run it back, I'm saying literally an almost a nearly mirror image of this team from last year and including Copper returning, Dolson returning, Astu Dufall returning. Allie Quigley, Vandersloot, and DeShields. Um, no Lexi? You can throw Lexi <laughs> in there as well. Um, but, but you know, you, you, you've got to be able – got to – okay, Dolson, are you willing to take a little bit less? Vander Quiggs, are you, are you two willing to take a little bit less? Um, you know, it, and it's, it's one of those situations where that, this is where you lean on those relationships, and this is where you try to convince, you know – it's like the bulls, you know, <laughs> like trying to keep this core together and, and, and run something. Rachel, back. let me, let me, sorry, let me uh-huh. just interrupt you to make a reference for our WNBA fans. And I never thought I'd have to do this for you, Rachel, oh. but for our WNBA fans who don't know the bulls, it's like the links during their championship runs, There's getting no their star no players. Come on. <laughs> I'm giving hockey. you a hard We're time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like the Lynx were able to get their star players. I mean, I think there was a, I'm trying to remember who it was. There was a season where like some bench player, I want to say like Planet Pearson or um, shoot, it was somebody else. I'm blanking on their name was like the highest paid player on the Lynx one season. And it was just humorous because it was a bench player who played maybe five minutes a game. Wasn't even one, wasn't even her name Montgomery, right? Like, but yeah, sorry. But no, but, but if you look at any of, you know, the dynasties through through sport, it comes down to that, right? Like like a core group of this team, not necessarily super concerned with getting the max amount for themselves that like people have to give and take a little bit here and there to secure those right pieces. And so that's going to be that's going to be the, 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 the magic trick, you know, see if James Wade can pull that off. Now, if not. And you really are just talking max numbers and, and limited numbers. I think it's going to be extremely difficult for um, Chicago 
to bring back Diamond to Shields. Um, just how much I think she sh- that could be thrown at her from another franchise. And my- well, I, and I'll add this in too, which is like a unique aspect that I think we don't, we wouldn't be talking about in the NBA or honestly in any men's professional sports um, sponsorship deals and things. We're not talking about, you know, yeah, I know Diamond's got the thing with Oakley. I know Kaz been all over the place getting different marketing deals um, shout out to her representation. What up, Tisha? Um, but I mean it in the sense of like, while Copper has like made a name for herself the past couple of years, she's not an Asia Wilson. She's not a Liz Cambage, Maya Moore, Sylvia Fowles, people like household names. And I don't mean that in an insulting way. I mean, in the sense of like, if I'm Brianna Stewart and, and we're going to talk about Seattle in a different episode, each episode's a different team. But if I'm Brianna Stewart and I'm sitting there, I'm going, or I'm Sue Bird. Or I'm, okay, player on this roster I can use as an example. Candace Parker. If I'm Candace Parker and James Wade comes up to me and says, hey, we can run it back and win a championship, but that means 40K less for you this year, 30K less for you this year. I'm okay with that if I'm a bigger player, right? Because you're making that up in sponsorship deals, so it's not as big a deal. When you're talking about the Steph Dolsons, the Lexi Browns, sure. uh, the Astus, the players who aren't getting that money as much money outside of the W that's where it gets really interesting. And these players, I mean, as the saying goes, go get your bag. I mean, do I think that maybe the team tries to throw a protected contract, a protected vet contract at maybe a diamond to shields to say, Hey, we can't offer you as much. But we can give you a secured amount. I don't know. It, it It's just an interesting thing. And the other thing I'll say to your point was we've seen this before with James uh, James Wade, head coach and GM of the Chicago Sky, who I believe it was last off season, maybe it was two off seasons ago. Honestly, since the bubble and COVID started, it's all meshed together. It feels like one long season. Um, but he had Vander Quiggs sign late. So he was able to order the roster how he liked it, present it to them. And I'm sure he presented it to them in his vision beforehand and say, look, mm-hmm. If you guys wait, we have more cap space to make moves. You'll get paid. Don't worry. But this just allows us the ability to use our money to the fullest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And 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 then that's the luxury, right, of having veterans who understand how all of this process is working and and, and who are completely invested. Not to say that something crazy couldn't happen. And what? What if we see the Vanderquig sign, you know, in Atlanta? That'd be crazy, right? Um. But yeah. I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't anticipate that. Oh my God. I think my heart would break. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think it's hard. I would be very impressed if this roster is able to be run back the way it was last year. I think it's more than likely that there, w- there will be a couple of salary cap casualties. And I think the most likely one is going to be diamond to shields. Um, I think after that, you could look at Steph Dolson, you know, again, back to your point of the depth, which is a really good point. Um, I personally, you know, I've, I've switched my position on Dolson on this roster, you know, a few years back, um, just the, the numbers and the performances, you know, just wasn't like, it felt strange to me now. I mean, and again, maybe it's cause the, the championship is so fresh in my mind. Um, I, I love Dolson on this roster. I love the leadership and, and the poise that she brings to this team on the court and, um, her ability to step in in those moments down the stretch were so amazing. And so I, 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 it's hard for me to now at this point headed into 2022 to envision the sky roster without a Steph Dolson on there. So I think my, my personal view is you find a way to secure copper, but the biggest likely casualty is going to be diamond shields with a secondary of potentially Steph Dolson. Um, I, I agree. Those are the two and- that you look at and think, man, if you can pull it off, that's amazing. You've got a lot of people who are really invested with your vision and, and really invested about winning a championship. Um, and, and that's impressive. And I think that speaks volumes to a lot of the players on this team, but that's going to be extremely tough to do. And I'll say just looking at uh, shameless plug on winsider.com, W I N S I D R.com. You can look at our free agency tracker. Um, it's got the list of all the free agents available but it's also got all the moves so you can stay updated on all the different moves going through. Uh, it's basically like a shout out to Rachel call sheet for all the hard work she's doing. Cause her name's in there more than uh, I don't know. 
more than sliced bread. I don't know. There's some catchphrase there. Um, but but the reason I bring it up, besides the shameless plug, is let's look at athletic guards or wings, possibly just real quick. Um, that would be a good fit in this situation that you lose a diamond to shields. Who's an athletic two-way player who could fit this team and and really I, I don't know what else. I don't want to say better because they won a championship. Can't get better than that. But just, you know, who on that level? Players that I'm looking at who would be interesting that if I'm James Wade, I'm like, it might not be possible, but it's interesting prospect. Rebecca Allen, Nia Coffey. Sure. Here's another name that if she's chasing that title, if she wants a ring and she can move in here, play limited minutes and play as good as she has the past few years when she's been healthy. One Angel McCautry. Hmm. Interesting. I, I didn't honestly think about it till I'm looking at the list right now. You add Angel McCautry to that list. That's a scary team, right? <laughs> like that that's a scary move. We don't know what her health process is these days. And I know all the rumors of her mentoring uh, Kennedy Carter and expecting her to go back to Atlanta. I think that would be a beautiful cap. Another player that I think might be a little interesting to add to this team might be looking for too big of a paycheck. That's also an issue with Rebecca Allen. Um, but a player like Tiffany Hayes. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about adding sure. that to this team. Um, that would be pretty, pretty ridiculous, honestly, if you ask me. And there's a few other players that I'm looking at um, that I think would be interesting ones. Obviously, Jewel Lloyd coming back to Chicago and playing on that team would just be freaking ridiculous. <sighs> Maybe add it, adding... An Odyssey Sims would be a, a nice fit. A Courtney Williams or Raquana Williams. Like there are some players that depending on how free agency falls, we might see a pretty explosive player join this team, which I think could be very, very exciting. Yeah. I mean, like you said, potentially willing to take a little bit less, but be on an immediate contender team. You know, I mean, I don't know what's, what the hell is going to happen, but um, I, 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 yeah, I, I mean, half the people you named right there, it's scary to imagine. And I, and nothing is off the table in my opinion. We've learned that in WNBA free agency. So, um, there's a lot of different options out there. There's a lot of different directions that this could go if, if the cap situation doesn't quite work out to, to return, like you said, that depth at the, at the guard wing position that Chicago's going to need. Um, I, I'm just going to throw this name out for fun because I think it would be just straight up hilarious um but sophie cunningham sophie cunningham if she went to chicago in this in this free agency period now i don't think she's the athletic wing that this team is looking for to fill that diamond of shields role i do think she would add an element of toughness she would add an element of toughness sure three-point shooting and it would be freaking hilarious to see her on chicago this season after what we saw in the finals any final thoughts on Chicago before we log off and uh, start recording our next episode? I, they've got to find a way to secure Clea Copper, number one, first and foremost.